You know what I hate about my life? When you spend 20 minutes recording a video, and the audio doesn't work. Okay, so what was the video? Let me get the right page. Crap. Okay, there we go. Right page. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about manga tools. Uh, specifically the tools that I use to write and draw my manga. First and foremost, my lifesaver, coffee. I like Dunkin' Donuts. I like French vanilla. Uh, I switch between that and tea. The tea I use, vanilla chai. I usually add a little bit of vanilla, a little bit extra vanilla, and a little bit of cream to the uh, tea. I use a uh, sweet cream, coffee creamer for the coffee. I don't know. I like lattes. I like sweet things. Well, I don't like sweet things. I like sweet drinks, I like coffee and tea. Actually, I drink my tea unsweet. Anyways, back to it. Ink. I use the cheapest ink at Hobby Lobby. Black velvet, waterproof India ink. That's a lie. It's not waterproof. If you put water on this, that dog is going to spread everywhere. What paper do I use? I use... Strathmore Bristol. I'm not sure what's... 200 series. Strathmore Smooth Bristol. Lined for pages. What does that mean? It's got lines on it. To show you not to draw in certain places, otherwise your stuff's not going to look good. Uh, I use that for actual pages, and if I need to patch something, I use cardstock, because it holds ink pretty well. Uh, my ruler, it's see-through, and it's like really lined. It's really helpful for backgrounds, which is a huge weakness I had because I didn't know how to do backgrounds. I didn't know how to line things. That was my backgrounds were garbage. Garbage. That helps. This box. I don't know. I guess I got it at like either Walmart or Hobby Lobby like six, seven years ago. Uh, I'm sorry for the background noise. My dog is outside. He wants in. I don't feel like letting him in because I'm making a video. Anyways, this was a like a watercolor kit and it came with crap watercolors but I like took out all of the insides so like the little plasticky bits right there I couldn't completely shave it clean all the like little bits that held like the paint and stuff I took that out and filled it with my pins of choice now you're probably looking over here and you're like coffee why do you have regular Crayola markers in there I use these for coding and stuff or not coding but uh, let's see where I put my crappy looking dog. Here's my crappy looking dog. Okay, on this page, I completely screwed up this dog. But I had my marker to put there to show that I needed to patch that. And in the corner, a note, redraw the dog. Because I don't want to waste my good ink on stuff that's not going to be seen on the page. So for any coding or any dialogue, I will use like a different marker for each character or for, you know, writing dialogue, writing notes, things like that. Uh, or if something needs to be toned a certain way, I will technically do the toning in marker. And then I bring it into the computer and overlay what I did with the marker with screen tone. Okay, what else do I have in here? Tachikawa pins. And this one, I really like this one because it has the lid and it has the little squishy part. And it's wood, it looks really cool. Uh, the Maru nib. Now, originally in this pen I had the, the G pen nibs. This is what I originally bought. But I wanted to try Maru nibs, so I bought another pen, and it doesn't even fit the Maru nib 
because it's only the, the wider nibs. So I used the G pin in that and I use a beak. Uh, this marker had gone dry, so I just use this for the uh, fits perfectly. Being innovative. Regular pink markers. They're a lifesaver. You can literally buy like a pack of like 20 for a dollar at Walmart. But you gotta be, I actually like these a lot better than the white ones. Sure, these work well when they're new, but they tend to get really old. They get really hard, like you, it has no bend to it. And they actually tend to get a little bit sticky over time. These, however, have seemed to hold life a lot more. Now, you wouldn't think that erasers would have an expiration date, but they do. And when they get old, they're bad. They will smudge everything. My pencils. I got a regular school pencil, mechanical pencil. Saves time on sharpening. The nib, the uh, graphite on this one is actually, I don't know if you can see it. Gosh, it's blue. I use that for backgrounds and stuff. Or to get like certain poses that I'm not confident in drawing, I will use the blue pen pencil. For actual pencil lines, I have a 0.5 lead graphite. Because uh, I like how little it is. I originally was using a 0.9 lead, and it just, everything looked so blurry, and it was, I like it clean. Almost as if it's the inking job. Uh, what else do I use? When I originally bought these pens, I bought like five different kinds. Off-brand kinds. Uh, I even bought some Stagler pens. Uh, but Microns and Faber-Castell last the longest. I use these for... Sometimes I don't want to deal with like cleaning these. Or the brushes, that's when I use these. I, depending on my mood, I switch between what product I use. Uh, and some pretty fancy brushes. Now, when doing backgrounds, especially bushes, grass, I can use brushes a lot better than I can these. Uh, so depending on what I'm drawing, for hair, I like using the technical pens. For panels, I like using the technical pens. For buildings, I like using the technical pens. For the characters, uh, things like that, and for like the fine details, bubbles and stuff, I like these. For thicker lines, of course, the G pen. For the actual characters, I actually prefer the Maru pen. Because of you can get the scratchiness, you can get the grittiness. Or even sometimes I will use uh, brushes for particular looks I want to achieve. Uh, so yeah, I got some Master's Touch brushes. Uh, and for correction ink, I had a lot of people actually tell me that this stuff was awful. I haven't had a bad experience with it yet. Uh, this is the Zig Cartoonist White Ink from Kurataki. It was, it was the cheapest white ink I could find on the website. I don't remember what website. But it was the cheapest one. And I've had pretty good experiences with it so far. It does what it needs to do. It covers up the mistakes. And you could do, like, stars with it when you, like, sprinkle it with uh, brushes and stuff. That's what I needed. That's what I got. What else do I have? I have regular school glue. Why do I have this? For doing the patch job. Like, for example, this right here, uh, I probably won't actually do a patch on this one because I kind of like the way her pose turned out, but I do not like the dog. The dog looks like crap. I actually even redrew the dog on cardstock. I'm going to, like, ink it in, scan it in, and patch it that way. But normally, I would take cardstock, cut out the exact shape of the panel that I wanted, and cover it up. And I would use this to attach it. Either this or tacky glue. And that's how I do my patches. Uh, what else? Here's my blue nibs. Or not my blue. Stop saying nibs! 
I got like a pack of like uh, 10 for like $5. The Eno color code soft blue. The good thing about that is when you, if you don't feel like erasing your pencils, this won't show up in the scanner. So it's really useful if you're short on time and you can just go back later and erase it. Uh, say hello to my camera. Yes, it looks like shit. It is a webcam with a pink, eh, with a pink ribbon around it that is attached to a ruler. That is my camera setup. Anyways, I use the mirror right here to catch any like symmetry designs. I don't know if you can. Yeah, like you can see if the face is sym symmetrical or not. Uh, I have a bigger blue one. I had a really big purple one, but guess what? I broke it. That's okay. I have bad enough luck. Look, if you ha already have bad luck and you break a mirror, does your luck get just worse? Or does it eventually go so far into the negatives that it starts going up? How does this work? I don't know. Uh, so yeah, this is what I use, all of my goodies, and you might be wondering, what about storyboarding and character poses, because I'm not that great at poses and stuff, and forgive them, I bought them on Wish.com, they're absolute crap, but they get the job done, she doesn't have a head, her head is like on the side table over there, his leg has fallen off. I don't know where it went. My dog may have ate it, for all I know. But this is how I do, like, the weird, obscure poses. I got them on Wish.com for $8, and... For $8, they've served their purpose. And they still do. Okay. My packs of nibs. Kachikawa. For storyboards. This, uh... I bought it for two dollars at Walmart, and you can change the covers. This was just a background pa practice. Uh, if you want to see more of my sketchbooks, let me know, and I'll. Some a lot of them are like missing parts, but yeah, this is where I do my recent storyboards and stuff like that. Yeah. So my storyboards. But yeah, guys, guys uh, let me know what uh, products and stuff you use. If Legend of the Erased uh, looks interesting to you, it is available for pre-order. And I'm going to be trying to uh, print it and release it this October. Uh, and I'm going to be going to like conventions and stuff, selling it. I'm going to be getting merchandise, you know, things like that. Uh, the pre-order is $15 and you don't just get the book with that uh, anything I can actually fit in the envelope you'll be getting buttons and stickers and small merchandise for $15 as well as a thank you in the back of the book of course if you wanted you know larger merchandise for $30 pre-orders you get uh, like a mug stickers stuff like that of course we got different rewards for you know larger price tags for $100, you can actually have your character put into the... They would be a background character, but they would be in the story. Well, not in the story, but like, you know, an extra. That's all we got for today. Uh, thanks for watching and have a nice day.